I like redheads. Their mouths are like a drop of strawberry jam in a glass of milk. Is it okay for you to bully Ben? Because he's a ranger. A what? A ranger, sir. Because he's got red hair. A ranger team. Yeah. That's what we call it. I have the highest opinion of redheads as a fellow hair minority group. The ginger element. Well, I've sort of got a borderline phobia. I'm not ginger. There's a tinge of Hi, hello everyone, my name is Carrie. Welcome to my channel. You saw the title, you know why we're here. Um, I wanna start this video off with a disclaimer that this video is not meant to be deep. <laughs> I have vaguely, like just because I have red hair, been sort of, not researching, but like aware of this stuff my whole life. And then for kind of the past months, I've been sort of playing around with making this video and I found so many other rabbit holes to go down. Basically, when you're talking about representation in media of any kind, it's so nuanced and it you can go back, I mean, I'm gonna go back to BC times, okay? It's complex, it's interesting. And yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about it because I feel like red hair in fantasy has always been a trend and it is just continuously growing and why not chat? I have red hair, so <laughs> here I am. Hopefully we'll have some interesting things going on in the comment section. And I just want to tell you some fun facts about the mutants that live among you. Redheads. Pop quiz. What is red hair? Red hair is a mutation in our genes, the MC1R gene, which affects our melanin, which basically affects our hair color, but it also affects some really interesting things like the production of certain vitamins, our pain receptors, and probably most well known is our like difference of sensitivity to anesthesia from all other humans. <laughs> we make up about two to six percent of the world's population and it is not linked to one ethnicity. When we're talking about fantasy, 99% of the time we are talking about a white redheaded, usually woman, um, but that is not true. You can see redheads represented all over the world. I'm going to be pulling a lot of my facts from this book. It is Red a History of the Redhead by Jackie Collis Harvey. If you are a redhead, I do think this is a fun book to read, but I will add a disclaimer that the author clearly loves redheads. Um, so it's border, it's like, calm down a little bit there, Jackie. Uh, we are not superhumans, but it is filled with really interesting facts and I have tabbed it for this purpose. But just to show you um, that we are all over, there are records of ancient native populations of redheads in places such as Afghanistan, Morocco, Algeria, Iran, Northern India, Pakistan, and provinces within China. You can see redheads being talked about absolutely everywhere. We are all over the place, but we are still a teeny tiny population. So teeny, in fact, that it's odd how often you will see a redheaded character in media and we're going to talk about that in a second but just off the top of your head if you want to think of your favorite fantasy series fantasy book and just take a minute and go through think if there's a redheaded character this is the list just off the top of my head here with not just a side character but a main character having red hair so we are represented <laughs> so yeah i guess in this video i just kind of want to talk about redheads in media the common tropes that you will see related to redheads what it means i asked a couple authors like why do you have a redheaded character what drew you to red hair and just kind of debunking a couple of myths i learned a lot um especially from this book about where a lot of the negative stereotypes of red hair comes from because i feel like in this generation red hair is just seen as like a pretty usually a pretty hair color but even in just you know my mom's generation and anyone older than that it was a very negative thing to have red hair there's a lot of negative stereotypes that growing up i was very lucky to not really know about it wasn't until i really got into college where people started to make weird jokes and i was like what i guess i i also like sidebar i grew up in a place where i did not see other redheads growing up there was one girl who was in my grade 
who had red hair but had the audacity to dye her hair blonde. So I was really the only redheaded girl that I knew growing up. And so then when I went to school on the East Coast where there's a much higher population of Irish people and thus many more redheads, people had like more knowledge of how to make fun of a redhead than anyone I grew up with. Um, so I started to learn all these weird jokes and stuff about people with red hair that I had never been exposed to. So I will say like if you are in my generation and you have been made fun of for having red hair, like it still does exist but not to the level that it was previously. Um, so learning about going way, 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 way back. Um, super duper interesting. So that's basically just what I want to talk about um, and like I said, I went down some rabbit holes. Let's just dive in. Do you want to learn? Do you want to learn about redheads? Let's go. Um, but first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that has classes for everything you can imagine from crocheting to how to manage your taxes as a freelancer. Um, truly anything you want to know. And I have hyped up their creative writing classes so many times, but this is a great video to talk about it because if you want to avoid common tropes, if you want to learn how to make really interesting rich characters without relying on just giving them a hair color to be their personality, um, they have a really amazing group of teachers on Skillshare for creative writing especially. So I highly, highly recommend that you check it out. There's gonna be a link in the description box, but the first 500 people to click that link will get one month free of Skillshare. Truly, like, poetry, short stories, creative writing, nonfiction writing, all of it. Please check it out. Highly recommend as well as all of their other courses. I have a class if you want to start vlogging. I'll put that down below as well. Thank you so much to Skillshare. Truly a wonderful, wonderful resource for people trying to learn anything online. Go learn and uh, maybe see how you can add diversity to your cast of characters without using red hair. <laughs> okay, so I couldn't find any solid data about the representation of redheads in literature, but there has been a lot of studies about redheads in especially TV commercials. And so like I said, the number, especially in the US, we make up about two to 6% of the population. But according to a report in The Atlantic, usually 11% of actors on TV, in TV commercials, will have red hair. And so it is more common to see a redhead on the screen than it is if you are walking down the street in the United States. There are so many theories, um, especially like color theories with like red, meaning like you want something, whatever. Basically, the most common theory is just that red hair stands out and it's rare, so it's gonna catch your eye. Um, one thing I find really interesting is that probably most of your favorite redheaded actresses are not natural redheads. I am of the camp that like red hair is a state of mind, so if you dye your hair red, welcome to the club. Some people are not like that, but I consider, you know, if you have had red hair at any point in your life, we're family, okay? But women like these, representatives of our family, are actually blondes. <laughs> Most famously, Amy Adams. She's a natural blonde, she's conventionally attractive, but she felt like that was putting her in a box. She wasn't getting these kind of serious roles, and once she dyed her hair red, she found that she was being offered more roles that were just more various. You could be more dramatic. People were taking her more seriously as an actress, and she has remained a redhead pretty much since then, give or take a few roles where she dyed her hair back. And I just find that so interesting that red hair can completely change someone's career and give them such a different energy. And I love Amy Adams to death, so happy to have her with us. And so like I said, there are so many theories about why red hair is popular, especially in TV and film. So I asked you guys on Instagram, I asked why, like what do you think about a redheaded character? Why do people use red hair? I got a lot of the same answers and we're gonna kind of pick apart a couple of these. But mainly we got red hair makes a character unique or makes them stand out. They're immediately seen as quirky or not like the other girls. Someone said it looks dope. Red hair is the color of fire and passion. The personality matches their hair. We're gonna go into this. Redheads have a more spicy or fierce attitude. We got a lot of people saying fierce, fiery, rebellious. Red hair seems magical. It signifies magical powers, especially because I'm more focusing on fantasy. 
this is a big thing. This is one that people didn't say a lot, but this is actually one that we're gonna dive into, which is promiscuity. Red hair equals promiscuous, stubborn, connection to nature, connection to witchcraft, connection to fairies, connection to, actually, I'm just gonna read, read how they wrote it. Likely to be pirates which just made my day. Rebellious, easy to make metaphors about their personality, describing their hair, fire, fiery, feisty, etc. Editing Carrie here, I will say that this is a double-edged sword in terms of having a lot of metaphors that you can make about red hair because certain authors go a little bit overboard. Most recently, I read Sword Catcher in which the main character has red hair, but Cassandra Clare described it as fire, but also like roses but also scarlet, but also a deep dark auburn, but also the color of blood. Which is it? <laughs> and then this one is also one we're gonna kind of dive into, which is red hair is the rarest color, so they're exotic while not offending, I'm quoting, quoting, <laughs> while not offending anyone's political biases, which means diversity, but still white, okay? And so you guys pretty much hit the nail on the head in terms of popular tropes, but I'm going to break down some of the most well-known ones and the ones that have stood the test of time. I personally am going to be mostly focusing on women. Um, female redheads are much more common and Honestly, redheaded men have a really rough time. I'm actually going to dive into it a little bit, but red hair on men is almost 100% of the time a negative attribute. Nowadays, we have things like Outlander and Aquatar um, that are, you know, doing our redheaded men well, but throughout history, and I'm talking about thousands of years, red hair has been a marker of extremely negative things, and it links back to colonization, anti-Semitism, really interesting stuff. So I will touch on that, but um, for these tropes, I'm going to specifically be talking about women. And right before I dive into any of these tropes, I will say that I don't think any author in this time period, the 2020s, the 2000s in general, if they're putting a redheaded character in their books, I do not think that they are strongly considering these tropes or thinking too deeply into it. So if someone has a evil redheaded man character, I do not think that they understand that this thousands of years ago was linked to anti-Semitism. Maybe they just wanted to make their villain have red hair. So that's why I kind of said in the beginning of this video that this video is not that deep. I really think it's just an aesthetic choice that people are making and aren't diving too deeply into it, but it's cool to know the history behind it. So that being said, tropes for our redheaded ladies in literature, media of all kinds. <laughs> First and foremost, that temper, stubbornness, a fiery personality. That is the one redheaded stereotype that I knew growing up, which is the red hot temper. It's just such a sick cycle because I don't think that I have that much of a temper, but when I get a little bit mad and someone says, ooh, it's that redheaded temper, ooh, that pisses me off. And so then I get mad and then they're like, oh, it's cause you're a redhead and then it it builds, okay? If someone tells you that you have a bad temper, a bad attitude enough times, you're gonna have a bad attitude and a bad temper. I have not found a scientific or a historical reason for why we are told that redheads have a stubborn or hot-tempered disposition, but that is probably the most known one and the one that readers kind of subconsciously pick up on, even if the author hasn't said it. They think like, oh, she's probably confident, stubborn, independent, strong-minded, and probably ready to fly off the handle at any moment. I don't really have much to say about that. It's a little bit true, but is it nature or is it nurture? Is the question I'm asking. <laughs> Next up is the trope that I find the most interesting, actually, and is one that we see still a lot today in the media, and that is the one that I pointed out, which is You wanna get in my world, get lost in it I'm tired of running, let's walk for a minute promiscuity and being addicted to sex, being the mistress, being the other woman, the woman who steals away your man. Your beauty is beyond compare with flaming locks of auburn hair. 
think of Jessica in Roger Rabbit. Even Miss Taylor Swift, when she in a music video played the other woman, she had red hair. Um, it's just sort of a marker of, ooh, she's no good. You better watch out for her. In this book, this is just one theory um, of how this started. And it all comes down to our genetic ability to produce our own vitamin D. Science rules. As I mentioned, red hair is a mutation of the MC1R gene. It doesn't just affect our hair, it affects a bunch of different things about our bodies, and one of those is that we can produce our own vitamin D. We can essentially live in places where there are, there is significantly less sun because we burn like crazy, so it's better for us to live underground, right? We produce more vitamin D, which means that we have some pretty strong bones. <laughs> and thousands of years ago, as people were migrating throughout the world and specifically moving further from the equator to places that had less sun than our bodies were used to, before our bodies adapted to that, a lot of people had difficulty, especially with the lack of vitamin D. So there were a lot of cases of people having, especially like Northern Europe, having brittler bones. And this was a real big issue for women because Women were having difficulty carrying babies to full term or surviving childbirth because their hip bones were so brittle that they could not physically hold a child. However, redheads, because we produced vitamin D naturally, we had stronger bones, we had much more success with having successful pregnancies. And according to this book, a lot of historians believe that this is the beginning of the promiscuous rumor trope, if you will. Redheads were having a ton of children compared to everybody else. So it began rumors of, are they just having a hell of a lot more sex? Are they having sex with multiple partners? Are they stealing your man? And it was this double-edged sword of redheaded women had these rumors about them, but on the other hand, women would use a lock of red hair as a talisman and wear them while they were pregnant for hope of a successful pregnancy. I just couldn't understand where it was coming from. I knew that, you know, on porn websites, we have our own section. We have a redhead section. So, like, what, why? How did we get here? And it's possible, according to this, that it all has to do with some strong bones. Also going back to promiscuity and the idea that red hair simply stands out more, it has been recorded that in the old, especially in kind of the olden days in Europe, if you were a prostitute and you had red hair, you stood out more and thus you were more likely to have customers. <laughs> There you go. Next up is a trope that makes a lot of sense uh, for fantasy, which is <laughs> links to magic, witchcraft, and vampirism uh, for redheads. And so I'm going to read you a little bit, sometimes seen as Romanian or Greek, um, but it's a recorded belief that if the deceased has red hair, he would come back in the form of a frog, a dog, a flea, or a bed bug and enter into houses at night to suck the blood of beautiful young girls. Vampires, so the thinking goes, are bloody. Red is the color of blood, therefore redness must predispose one to vampirism. In Slavic mythology, people with red hair and gray eyes are regarded, are regarded as vampires in Serbia. Judas, who we will get back to, is, re oh my God, it's pouring, can you hear that? Oh my God. Judas was rejected from both heaven and hell, and thus he was wandering and seen as the vampire, which I will return to when we talk about men. Saint Jerome, a saint, wrote a letter to his daughter Paula that she should not dye her hair red because red is the color of fire and thus linked to hell and the devil. It's also the color of rage and erotic arousal, passion, blood, linking us all together with Passion, fiery tempers, sex addicts, the devil, we got it all. We got it all. There's also Gustav Klimt, <laughs> who used a redheaded lust in his Beethoven's Freeze in Vienna in 1902, which leads me to our final trope, which is the evil redhead. And this links back to my girl, Lilith. <laughs> 
Lilith is theorized to have been the first wife of Adam and that didn't work out and now she is the lady of hell the wife of the devil, a demon in her own right. She is cited for having been banished from the Garden of Eden for not complying with and obeying Adam. And Lilith has almost always been shown as a redheaded woman. Our Lady Lilith uh, was best known for killing children and seducing men in their sleep. She caused wet dreams. She also might leave her victims impotent or even cause their penises to disappear entirely. Women as a sexual predator has always terrified and aroused in equal measure, and witches have always been bewitching, in art and popular culture at least. In 1932, we see the release of a film called Redheaded Woman starring Jean Harlow. Harlow's character in the movie, wearing a flame red wig throughout, was a homewrecker, blackmailer, adulteress, and would-be murderess, thus ticking just about all the boxes for a sinful female redhead. The same transformation is still being used today in the X-Men. When Raven is Raven, she's a blonde. When she's the villainous Mystique, her hair turns copper. This is a version of the redhead, the evil redhead, that began with Lilith. This is the red hair as a marker for sorcery and supernatural, nowadays with a pinch of existential angst thrown in the mix as well. And also more recently, we have Brie Vandekamp from Desperate Housewives, the perfect housewife and mother with her spotless home and flawless hair and makeup, and her equally perfect willingness to kill to keep it that way. Her red hair is the viewer's clue that all with this woman is not as it seems. But all that being said, redheaded women, when they are evil, there's always this kind of not positive spin to it, but that idea of like, ooh, she's evil, but she's sexy, right? She's never like this purely evil thing. For men, this was not the case. If you want to look for reasons for the continuing and increasing antipathy towards redheads, in particular redheaded men in medieval Europe, look no further than its anti-Semitism. If you want to place the point at which attitudes towards red hair and men and women begin so radically to diverge, likewise. Red hair for men, all of their negative stereotypes, such as being weak, being troublemakers, being just creepy in general, unattractive, usually like aloof or stupid, they're either like completely stupid, dumb, not worth your time, or these evil masterminds that are gonna trick you out of everything you've ever loved. All of that stems to anti-Semitism and red hair being linked to Judaism and Jewishness. And this is all quotes from the book, by the way. In medieval art, red hair in men was visual shorthand for a brutal character of a particular unthinking sort, animalistic, unintellectual, unreachable by reason, and all the more frightening for that. It's noticeable that red hair appears in some of the most nastily caricatured depictions of Judas. Judas, uh -uh. Judas, Judas. Yes, that one, the one who betrayed Jesus. Redhead. And oh, how that prejudice linking Judas and Jewishness and red hair persisted. Even Charles Dickens. I don't know why she says even Charles Dickens because Charles Dickens is well known for being anti-Semitic, but in Oliver Twist, he introduced the world to the character of Fagin, a quote, very old shriveled Jew whose villainous looking and repulsive face was obscured by a quantity of matted red hair. Fagin's character very likely contributed at least as much to the negative associations of red hair as the prejudices that gave us red haired Judas in the first place. And it's kind of like whenever we sort of forget that people hate redheads, especially redheaded men, pop culture will bring it back. So we had Judas, maybe Judas was kind of falling out of the limelight a little bit. And then we brought in Fagin with the incredibly well-known Oliver Twist. We also, of course, in my generation, had South Park. The Notorious Ginger Kids episode broadcasted in 2005 with Cartman proclaiming that gingers have no souls and can't go out in the sunlight, much to the fury of Kyle, possessor of a little seen but magnificent red, quote, Jew fro. You see? We've all seen him on the playground, at the store, walking on the streets. They creep us out and make us feel sick to our stomachs. I'm talking, of course, about Ginger Kids. Sick. I could go on and on and on about it. I just think it's, I thought that was so interesting. Like for me, because of my background, I link red hair to Irish Catholics because all the redheads in my family are Irish Catholic. But go back 
a couple hundred years and red hair was really strongly linked to a mark of being Jewish. So really it's just, like I said, I don't think anybody in this era thinks about that. Um, when they make a redheaded villain, especially a redheaded male villain, but it's just really interesting to think that um, there are so many little stereotypes for everybody um, that can go back to such little things like an artist choosing to portray Judas as having red hair. Who knows if he actually did? No photos back then, right? This is so disorganized. I'm sorry. I'm really just like chatting with you. Um, something that I was sent when I was asking you guys for what you think about redhead characters, Ruby, shout out to Ruby, sent this to me. And once I saw it, it was like a light bulb moment for me. I'm not gonna speak too deeply on it, but I never thought about how similar the tropes related to redheaded women are to how the media portrays women of color, especially how the media represents black women. I will just show you, I will just show you the video now. Actually, hi, editing Carrie here. Um, the creator didn't get back to me in terms of if I had permission to use her content. So just to paraphrase, the creator was just mentioning how you will oftentimes see a redheaded character from literature be replaced with a character of color, usually a black character, when there is a movie or TV adaptation. And that's sort of because a lot of the stereotypes you see for redheaded women, you see for black women, but obviously taken in totally different ways. Like I've mentioned, redheaded women there's always like they're evil or they have a temper, but it's kind of like, oh, but it's cute or oh, but it's sexy. But then when those stereotypes are applied to black women, it's always in the negative. I found that to be quite interesting and I will let past me talk. So like I said, I don't think I'm the person to speak on this, but if you'd like to learn more about it, I read a book a few years ago called The Sisters Are All Right, and it goes into representation of black women in media, and it breaks it down into basically three tropes that once you see them, you cannot unsee them. I definitely recommend it, but I do think that it's interesting that you can have a redheaded character, have this stubborn, fiery temper, always angry, but when those attributes are shown in a character that is a woman of color, we get things like the quote unquote mad black woman. Thank you again to Ruby for sending that my way. So like I said in the beginning of this, I don't think that any authors nowadays are putting in redheaded characters for the sake of using any of those tropes. Like I said, I don't think they are linking redheaded men to Judaism. I do think it's simply the rise aesthetically of red hair being a thing. And so I actually asked some authors why they chose redheaded characters in their books. And here are some answers. And here is my dead camera, so I'll be right back. <laughs> According to Instagram, almost all of the answers were very similar to reasons why people think there are redheaded characters in the first place. Um, it was adding uniqueness, diversity, making their characters stand out. A lot of them were low-key self-inserts because as redheads we wanted to see a redheaded character. Some of them were trying to link to a more historical, tie back to the fairy tales they were trying to tell, so making it linked to the Celts or to Ireland and Scotland. And just to add one more thing about the men, I said that it linked not only to anti-Semitism but to colonialism. When the British colonized Ireland, it's a very common thing to have people think of redheads equaling Irish, equaling drunk, stupid, Poor. So a lot of times if you see in England specifically the hatred of red hair, um, specifically in men, it just ties back to Ireland and colonialism. Okay, anyway. But here, just very quickly before I get into who are your favorite redheads and then wrapping this up because I'm so sorry this video was a mess. Some things I would love to see that authors don't put in when they talk about redheads. A lot of times I feel like authors will just drop in that the character has red hair and like not mention it a lot. And I feel like that's a little disingenuous because as much as I like am embarrassed to say it, like red hair is my personality. Like it is such a part of me. Ever since I was able to talk, I've had people come up to me like daily to talk about my hair. 
um, it's it's just I cannot separate myself from my hair and so when people just like drop it in like oh she has red hair bye I feel like the the authors that actually do consistently talk about their hair it makes sense for a redheaded character I will say even though I did not enjoy the book Cassandra Clare is known for always having a redheaded character usually as the main character and in sword catcher um, she actually really used that as a tool and that's kind of the only thing I thought she did really well in the book. Um, if you want to see my review of it, I did my wrap up of October reads. But she has her main character be a redhead and it is contrasted with one of the characters consistently saying how much he's not attracted to redheads and that ends up feeding in greatly to a cute little romance that was the only cute moment where I was like, aha, there's Cassie Clare writing her romance. It was because she set that all up with a redheaded character. So I do think that mentioning red hair a lot like makes sense and having that be a big part of their character is like a valid thing. Um, I will say that I don't see people talking about pain tolerance anesthesia and painkillers. I think it would be really interesting if a redheaded character needed more, you know, evil magic or shit to knock them out or whatever. It is proven that bees and birds annoy the hell out of us more than anybody else because our hair is an attractant. We look like a flower to bees, I guess. I don't know. Bees are always around me. Um, so I think that would be, be an interesting thing, especially if you're working with fantasy. And also how our hair goes white. I think that's really interesting. None, we don't go salt and pepper. We don't go gray. We go white. And I'm personally really excited for that. I'm really scared for when my hair does go away because like I said, it is such a big part of me, but I'm also really excited to go like white. So that is something interesting as well. I think that we saw it in Howl's Moving Castle in the book, Sophie's a redhead. And when she becomes old Sophie, she has white hair. So I think that that's really cool. And then just really quickly ranking your favorites, um, across the board, everyone's favorite was Anne of Green Gables which I love actually in Korea. She, she's called Balkan Mori An, which is redheaded Anne. So she is the redhead and we love her. Next up, uh, just because of the people who watch my channel, next up was Lucian. I think Lucian's a really interesting example of, it hasn't been confirmed, but I'm just gonna say he is mixed raced. So he is a redhead that is not stereotypically a pale white redhead even though fan art oftentimes shows him that but anyway so we got lucian we of course have the weasleys um who were sort of the redheaded family and everyone else got pretty much one vote i will say they were definitely your top and we also have a shout out for miss frizzle because miss frizzle is my girl so yeah like i said i don't really know what i'm doing with this video i just wanted to point out some interesting things because i just as i as i read especially fantasy i'm constantly being like up oh, the character is a redhead. I was just reading Hush Hush and she calls herself a brunette, but everyone else calls herself a redhead and she acts really pissed off when people call her a redhead. So I don't know what, we never got an answer and the covers are in black and white. So I will, will never know. Does she have red hair? Is she a smoky brunette as she called herself? Who knows? Yeah, it's just something that like, because it is my hair color, I tend to notice it more and I wanted to talk about it. So again, not super deep, just an interesting trend I was seeing and wanted to talk about. Once again, thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this. You can get the link in my description box, but the first 500 people to click that link will get one month free of Skillshare. Highly recommend. And yeah, I think I'm gonna leave you here. I don't really know what I'm doing with this video, but I'd love to just chat with you in the comments. I wish I was a person who could actually make those like video essays that are nicely researched and organized, but I hope you don't mind me just kind of blathering. Let me know your thoughts. And uh, next time you see a redhead in one of your fantasy books, think about what is that author trying to say? <laughs> so, and also if you're an author, please um, let me know more about why you chose a redheaded character in the first place was it just to have one you know um which is valid right so anyway okay i'm going to leave you i'll see you next time let me know what you're reading um once again most of this came from read by jackie collis harvey interesting stuff so okay have a really wonderful day
Um, and I will see you next time. Okay, bye.